Hey guys, Jason, and I haven't done a video forever, and I haven't done a single video at campus yet. Because um, if you guys don't know, I'm on, I'm on college now. I did an update video yesterday that was actually in my car using my car mount that I use for like my GPS for my phone. And I did a video, and it turned out pretty well. Um, I was able to edit it with Adobe. But, you know, college is going very well for me. I've been doing a lot of stuff, so I've been very busy. I've been doing a lot of media stuff for my media department and for Orbit um, Television or Orbit TV um, for my Skin University, but I haven't done any videos for Gamers Gone Tech. And so I thought, what better to get in and, you know, get back in the scheme of me doing my YouTube videos than to talk about Bitcoin, because it is the leading cryptocurrency. And what better to talk about it than the client itself? Now, there's been an update to the Bitcoin Core client, and that's um, update point zero point nine point three. Now this is a minor update, there's not much really going on, but a few things stuck out to me and I think it will spark the interest of my viewers, and so I thought I would bring it to you guys. Now the first one is, it's pretty simple, it, and of course there's a whole bunch of these I'm not going to talk about because you know they're minute enough or they're under the hood type of updates that um, the viewer that is not into coding is not going to fully understand, so there's no really point of reference in it. So the first one is, well, they added a checkpoint at the block 295,000. Now, in layman's terms, checkpoints um, do two things. They protect against DOS attacks or de um, distributive service or denial of service attacks. Depends on how you view the uh, how you read the wording of that. And then you have fake chains. So first of all, in DOS attacks, usually you have situations where it's like a um, DNS attack, something in the like that it's trying to stop. Um, you from finding peers or other like, or situations like the fake chain, it's trying to, you know, break the chain apart or, you know, if there's network issues, we always talk about the 51% attack, fake chains um, implement in the 51% attack, and so to have checkpoints, um, kind of, they help in a sort, it's part, it's one of those things where you have to have multiple parts that all work together for things to work out right, and checkpoints are just one of those things. It's kind of um, a way for the network itself to check and make sure and the blockchain system, if you want to refer to it as a system, for it to check and know where it's at. Pretty simple, but it's just something they usually seem to implement every so many updates, and it's just kind of one of those routine things. But it seems to spark the interest of some people usually, so I thought I'd bring it up. Now the next thing is, and this is probably one of the better things, because we do have problems with the orphan blocks. Uh, orphan blocks just happen naturally in the Bitcoin um, system, if you want to refer to it again as a system. But one of the things is um, better orphan transaction handling. And so if there is an orphan block, those transactions that were in that orphan block that got absorbed, you know, got accepted into that orphan block, if you want to call it like that, well then in that situation, it's supposed to have better handling. It's more of, um, again, you know, under the hood type situation, uh, it's more coding, but it's um, the better reference and for the program, Bitcoin client, reference as a program, for it to better operate if um, orphan block does, you know, exist. Uh, well, they're going to exist if it does um happen because you have to happen all the time it's just to better fix it again that in its own self is my new um it's everything from most of the updates the bitcoin core um client that we've seen uh, because the bitcoin Core client is that you know again the core client most of the stuff are you know under the hood issues or issues where they're trying to improve on something that's already been implemented it's just trying to improve or update that so like when i say you know better orphan transaction handling it's just that they've implemented a better or they've you know leaned the program you know, they, they made it more efficient or they made it better at understanding or um, comprehend I hate to use the word comprehending because computers don't really comprehend but the way it analyzes it so number three um, and this is more of a security type thing so um, does it fi file under miscellaneous somewhat does it file under kind of important uh, a little bit as well is it we upgraded open SSL to 1.0.1i and there was, and I, I could go into the technical part about this, but there was a little bit of security stuff. They um, open um, SSL, publish an update, and they implemented that into the Bitcoin Core client. Just one of those things where, you know, if a system that corresponds with the Bitcoin Core client in even a non-direct way, you want it to be, you know, all coalescently upgraded to provide security at the most maximum capability. It's just, I mean, something that we do, if, if you have a program and it implements other third-party software or authorization systems, and there's an update to that, or there's a zero-day exploit that came out, you want to find something to fix that. And so, again, this is more, you know, a simple fix, but it's just something that should be noted because OpenSSL is used almost everywhere for security layer stuff. Um, and so it's important that's being upgraded in Bitcoin Core Client as well, and that there's no, you know, confusion about whether we should or not. Pretty simple. And the last one 
is, and this is probably the most important for international users, and this is probably, most of my users are from the US or Europe, but for those who aren't, this is an important thing, is translations. So it's really easy to get the Bitcoin Core client in English or in, you know, French, but some of the more, you know, languages, or another big one is Chinese, is sometimes, you know, the people that program Bitcoin Core client usually team, team, <laughs> sorry, it's late, usually tend to be, you know, from Europe or the United States. And so most of the programming is written in English. And so there is this open source thing out there where people will try to translate, or they don't try, they, they do, they translate the English version of the Bitcoin stuff into, you know, Chinese version, the French version, the Spanish version, any of these different types of languages to make it so anyone in the world, um, even if they speak a different language or read a different language, they can use the Bitcoin Core client. And that's always kind of cool. Um, a lot of times companies have to bring in outsourcing where Bitcoin's open source, so everything has to be done by the community. So it's cool to see people in the community, you know, outreaching that, you know, if you have a person that's really interested in Bitcoin that speaks Spanish, that also knows English, that they can help translate some of the, you know, the um, GUI words. And GUI is the graphics user interface, the stuff that the user sees when they're using the client. If you can upgrade that, then it's awesome because you expand your usability and you expand your uh, percentage of people that can actually use it because not everyone can read English. I know it's an international standard we're setting today with you know the United States and China and even those in Europe. But in the third world countries, you know where there's a huge push for future adoption of Bitcoin because you know it's easy. Um, there's no banking industry. You know no um, percentage fees required besides the transaction fees, of course. Then it's really great to have these in different languages because you can accommodate way more users, uh, and that's you know always better for the Bitcoin environment. You know and for the whole community the Bitcoin possesses. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I know this is kind of a long video for a you know pretty simple update, but you know it's my first video back. It's kind of weird to get back into this. I'm doing it in a college dorm and not in you know my um, living room downstairs or in my room where I mine my computers at home. A little different, trying to get used to it. But I'm gonna try to do every a video every day now. It's really hard. I'm trying to set time aside, but I'm so busy right now. And if you guys watched my video I posted yesterday, you'll see that I really have a shortage of time right now. So to try to get videos out there is my goal. Anyway, guys. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.